everybody we welcome you today if you're watching with us we welcome you this morning good to have you it's a good Sunday amen yes. Palm Sunday amen we're thinking about the resurrection all week what our Savior was about to go through for us how many of you know in this place that he died for you while we were still sinners he died if that's not enough to give thanks for, I don't know what is. So right there where you're standing, we know we come into his presence with thanksgiving coming out of our mouth. You cannot thank him silently. If you are grateful to someone, you do everything in your being to let them know, I am grateful. I recognize your gift to me. I thank you. It is beyond words what I can say to you. Can you begin to do that right now? Father, we thank you in this place. We honor you, your gift, your sacrifice, the wonderful work, work that you have done in us and through us. We thank you, God, that you are ever, ever, ever interceding at the right hand of the Father and in the courtroom where justice takes place, that you are interceding for us today. You are our advocate. You are on our side. Amen. When uh, trouble came or we got ourselves in trouble and we should have punishment, you stood in the way and said, I'm working on them. Just hold that back for just a minute. Amen. Your mercy, your grace, your kindness towards us is amazing, and we thank you for it. Now, we now we come in here to praise today. Did you come in here to praise today? You cannot praise him silently either. Come on, you have to speak out of your mouth. Your whole body should be praising the Lord, whether that's in the jump, the dance, the shout, lifting our hands, clapping. Amen. We lift up the name of Jesus. How many of you know it was a happy day? How many of you remember when Jesus washed your sin away, made you a new creature in him? Amen. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Spirit and purpose. We thank you. It's the greatest day in history. Hallelujah. Come on and give him some praise today. We're here to celebrate. Our King, we put those hands together. So, greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you is a Of 
perfect peace Earthly pain finally will cease Celebrate, cause Jesus is alive
we're thankful for the blood. You're thankful that he washed you clean. It was a good day. You've been sanctified, set free, and made whole. Amen. There's no demon in hell that can come near you. The blood of Jesus rebukes your enemy. Amen. We're thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. How many know that Jesus, his love is greater. Strength is greater. His peace is greater. Come on. We love on you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We worship you in this place. Receive our love, and as we shout your name, receive our praises, receive our
Jesus is greater. Amen. And I love what the word tells us is that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're thinking about Jesus so much today, this week, all that he went through. And I know Bishop has a wonderful word for us today. But come on, I want you to bless the Lord this morning. I want you to praise without restraint. Worship without restraint. Forget about everybody else. I know we're all in here together. But we want to worship God with our whole heart. If you're thankful today for what he did as sacrifice, we thank you, Jesus. Say I was rich. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. And sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid a debt I owe. Broke my chains. Freed my soul for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus, you have washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my to glorious
say thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, you have washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my Strong. 
him some thanks this morning. Come on, give him some thanks. Give it up for Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I want you to look at somebody and tell them before you take your seat, it's by the blood. That's how I'm here. That's how I haven't lost my mind. Amen. It's by the blood. Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. We welcome you today. If you're watching with us, we welcome you this morning. We'd love to get connected. Love to get connected here. If you haven't connected with us or it's been a long time, uh, you can just get your phone out, follow those prompts real quick. Super simple. Uh, but we, getting connected means that you get updates, alerts, some messages, some encouraging words. If you're keeping a calendar, I have just some announcements for you. Don't forget, everybody listen up. Corporate prayer tomorrow. Who does that? Who does that? Who am I speaking to? Everybody in this room and those who have missed today. Corporate prayer tomorrow, 6.30 to 7.30. And then Friday, we will uh, do communion together for our communion for the month of March. Also, Kids 180, if you have a, a youngster or maybe a niece or nephew, and you say they're not really in church, get them here. They have some fun things planned uh, for Easter Sunday. So they want you to invite your uh, friends and family to celebrate downstairs with Kids 180. Also, no service Wednesday after Easter. That date is April the 3rd. Uh, so mark that in your calendar. And also, we have a women's retreat update available. You can see Miss Connie or Pastor April and or at, someone at the information desk, and we will get you the correct information. And uh, we're excited to see that set in place and have some good fellowship. There's limited space available, so if you're interested, you got to get your deposit in. All right, everybody, it's time for our tithe. You know, if someone gives up their life for you and it just says, I just need 10%, that belongs to me back. That's a, that's a pretty easy exchange. Anybody agree with me today? If you're going to lay down your life and sacrifice and then not only that, but, but come here, leave the Holy Spirit here for us, go back to prepare a place for us, come back to get us that we will reign with him, amen, forever and ever, and we'll have a new world, and we're excited about that. But he says the tenth belongs to me. That's a tenth of our increase. So he says you keep the 90. When the church is operating effectively and people are tithing and giving offering correctly, the Bible says that that means we should have everything that we need on every occasion. And so remember, we're not being generous yet. It's after your 10%. That's where your generosity comes into play. There's envelopes right there where you're sitting. If you don't know, by now, we bring our tithe, our offering, up to the left or right of the altar. We bring it up, and uh, we place it here. We honor the Lord with our, our best. We honor the Lord with what we worked hard to get. It is a blessing to Him. It is honor to Him. It is an offering to him and we bring it into the storehouse amen we want god's house to be blessed but i want your house to be blessed the bible says that when you bring your tithe and offering in the lord rebukes the curse where he the lord rebukes the devourer over you amen father we thank you we ask you to bless it multiply it use it for your kingdom excuse me <coughs> use it for your kingdom Amen for the advancement of this house and the word that goes around this entire world. Maybe if some of you don't know, but um, our program uh, goes all over the world in many, many countries. And there's places that it reaches that they don't have church or they're not allowed to be in church. So uh, your giving uh, facilitates that. And the word and the praise and worship is able to go all over the world. Amen. That's the wonderful thing about technology today, isn't it? Can you bless Bishop as he comes this morning? I, I'm almost tempted to make you sing that again. That. But I, uh, blessed assurance, I, I felt something on that. Blessed assurance. Did you feel something on that, Johnny? I, I, the doctrine in that song, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Th throw up the words again. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. I mean, when Marianne shifted into that, 
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I, I just, the tears, uh, little JoJo looked at me. She said, you okay, Papa? <laughs> so, she's so tenderhearted. And then she's, she became my Kleenex supplier. So <laughs> she kept running the Kleenex to the trash and turned around and bringing me some new ones. So, <laughs> But uh, it's, there's such a uh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a, look at the doctrine in it. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine heir of salvation his doctrine purchased of God born of his spirit washed in his blood oh hallelujah oh hallelujah then the next phrase says this says this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long Hallelujah. Man, we start saying, I said, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Amen. Lift both your hands to the Lord. Just say, you know what? That's my story. Where would you be if it weren't for the love of God? Oh, hallelujah. Where would you be if it weren't for the grace of God? The, the love of God is one thing, but for him to give you his grace. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm so glad that your judgment is slower than how man judges me. I'm so glad. I ask that your anointing be on this Palm Sunday, that we learn things about the king. I ask that offenses be dealt with every satanic agent of offense, the silent killer that sits in the atmosphere. We come against every, every brokenhearted, and mournful, sad, unhappy spirit that is vexing generations right now. We command a, a healing at a higher dimensional level than just cancer drying up. Heal my body, I live a little longer. But heal my spirit, I live for eternity. Oh, hallelujah. Look at somebody say, I want to live forever. Not just for a little bit. The messages that I've been preaching on strongholds have probably been more uh, revelated to me uh, in these last uh, few season here uh, than any message I probably preach it's probably made me think more introspect more uh, I'm amazed at how easy we are religiously um, comforting ourselves like we'll, we'll live in unforgiveness but then tell everybody we don't uh, yet people see your essence I, I'm really big right now that Christ is the essence Jesus is the person Christ is the essence. Somebody's phone started worshiping. Hallelujah. Glory to God. People get offended very easy, and you have to be very careful with offenses. You have to be very careful with, I uh, uh, was talking to somebody uh, this week about disappointments. Uh, somebody you don't know, nobody in the church here, so it ain't none of y'all. Because, you know, see, many of y'all offended. Y'all talking about me. I wasn't counseling nobody. Nobody here is in a conversation about how so many uh, people disappoint this person. And I said to my, I'm actually working, I looked and I said, um, you know what disappointment is? What? It's putting wrong expectation in wrong places. <laughs> but let's go home. I just cured your disappointments. <laughs> It's, it's, it's putting an expectation someplace and it's, it's overly expecting something from someone else. There ain't a human on the earth that's going to satisfy you. I'm, wounded people always get offended. And I'm telling you right now, the message I preached about conquering, coping, 
or conforming. I cannot tell you the people that have sent me a, a private message on that said, uh, uh, people here said, uh, I'm a culprit. I mean, I heard that message, thought, hmm. And, and you hear it in your voice. Hey, how you doing? I'm making it. It's a culprit. It's not a conqueror. I'm getting by. That's all right. Ah. Uh, how's your day? Um, I, I said somebody the other day, I said, how's your day been? I got up, didn't I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you could have got up and you crippled. I mean, you could have woke up, you know. <laughs> your eyes bleeding. If your if your if your barometer of a day is just waking up, I mean, no man. In the name of Jesus, you know, there's a there's an essence of talking like you got some vic. I decree victory in this house in the name of. Ain't nobody. I want you to say this out loud. Ain't nobody gonna steal my victory. My victory is spiritual. It's not physical. That's what Palm Sunday's about. We're gonna get in here and. Teach a little bit. Loved the uh, praise and worship day. Can't wait for Sunday. We start our fast tomorrow. Uh, some of you are fasting sugar, so I already know you done bought out donut life. I know some of you are fasting social media and food. Try to do both, not just uh, so. But I think it's a good thing that there's such a mind absorption going on right now, a takeover of mind hostility. I was just hearing, I won't say who, but the thing that shocked me, I heard that for the sake, the mega churches, you you see the Antichrist spirit in the, uh, somebody and I were talking the other day, and I said, I'll tell you who's going to fund the Antichrist spirit. It's going to be America. America will be the nation that funds the Antichrist spirit. You see it now. That you hear it on the news. You're the problem. Christians are the problem. Conservative is the problem. Right? Somebody's got to fund it. Somebody's got to back it. Militarily. That's why we're getting Armageddon. Some of you need to know the Bible. That's why we're getting Armageddon. There's a military control. Everybody's going against one country. When did you think you'd see in this country people walking down thousands and thousands of people defending terrorism and rebuking Israel? Who would, who would you think? Who would ever say that now? 25 years ago, would you think that? Israel was that? No, you see, so you already see. You see the dark waves coming. And, and, and now, for the sake of numbers, this is what, uh, I won't say the name, but major church, major ministries now are saying, their social director says, for the sake of Easter being about people and getting people in church, we're going to remove statements uh, in this church by saying, we're not going to say resurrection. We're not going to say the blood of Jesus. We're not going to show the uh, crucifixion so that we're not offensive when we reach everybody. If, without the weapon of the blood, you can't reach anybody. Just because you show up don't mean you got reached. We cannot now be ashamed of, and then I'm sitting there thinking, when I read it, the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, everything's about the blood. It was about the blood in the Garden of Eden. I ripped an animal, innocent animal skin off his body, and he howled and screamed. I didn't give him pain medicine. Adam needed to know, when you walk in sin, this is a, it costs the innocent to pay for it. It was blood everywhere. I had never showed myself as a bloody God until then. Think about it. And so he says, so when you start getting ashamed of the blood, he said, then it was me that told Abram to kill the animals and lay the blood everywhere. And then I put him to sleep, and for the first time, I divided myself and walked among the blood and made covenant with man. He said, the second blood time you see in the Bible, I told man, kill the lamb. Apply the blood on the doorposts. Look yeah. what he said. So when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Judgment will pass over. He said in the third time, in the final time, the blood is applied. I applied it again because he said a man nailed him to the cross, but it was me on that cross. It was my blood on that cross. 
So you cannot be bashful of the blood. So look at somebody around you and say, if the blood offends you, you in the wrong house. You're in the wrong place. If the Holy Ghost makes you uncomfortable, you might be in the right place. <laughs> Listen to this uh, prayer. We're going to start praying tomorrow night. 6.30, right? 6.30, 7.30 right here. Tomorrow night we're going to be praying about ourselves. We're going to make self the focus about being delivered, talking about who you are to God. Tuesday night we're going to make it about children. I already sent uh, April a prayer. We're going to pray over, pray over our children and our children's children and decreeing that our seeds will be mighty on the earth. Uh, uh, then uh, Wednesday night, we're going to pray. I'll, I'm gonna send, we'll, we'll be sending out texts and tell you what themes will be Wednesday night, Thursday night. Friday night, uh, we'll end our prayer. I think we're doing communion Friday night in here. We're going to do personal communion. And then somebody, a little bird sang in my office and said something about maybe everybody, because uh, it's over at 730, and that's if the Holy Ghost don't move, and we laid out here and, uh, under the blood of Jesus. Uh, they want to go to Chick-fil-A. I guess that's the Jesus bird or something. I don't know. My, who all likes Chick-fil-A? Wait, let me see if y'all like Chick-fil-A. And it's funny, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Listen to this prayer of St. Patrick. Just a little bit of it, a little bit of it. Listen to this, listen to this. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me. God's eye to look for me. God's ear to hear me. God's word to speak for me. I arise today for God's hands to guard me. God's shield to protect me. God's host to save me. God's snare, uh, God, uh, host to save me from snares of devils. From temptations of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill afar and near. Look what he said. In Christ, I pray this prayer for Christ be with me, Christ be before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right. Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down. It's Christ when I sit down. It's Christ when I arise. Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. Hey, may somebody jump up and shout, nothing but the blood. <laughs> jump up and shout, nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. See, nothing but Jesus. It's nothing but Jesus. It's not Melinda. It's nothing but the blood. Excuse me a minute. But I like this. Christ above me. Christ beneath me. Christ to my right. Christ is the essence of Jesus. You got to remember that. Christ is not Jesus. Christ is the essence of Jesus. The spirit of Jesus. Uh, you can't have Christ. You can't have Jesus. You can't have Jesus. You can't have Christ. And I just like that. That the essence of Jesus above me. The essence of Jesus beneath me. The essence of Jesus to my right. The essence of Jesus to my left. Uh, if you think about me, Jesus. Uh, it's all about Jesus. If I walk in... I like that. Christ when I sit down. Christ when I get up. Christ when I get in my car. It's going to be Christ when I go to the restaurant. Christ when I work in my entrepreneurial set. You cannot be offended and angry and want to quit and do things when you got Christ all over you. Somebody shout, I got Christ all over me. You don't want to push me, shove me. You don't want to bump into me. Why? I'm so running over with the Christ cup. That what's on me going to get on you? I, I don't think some of you got it yet. I don't think some of you got it yet. I, I think you're still hoping we get up out of here by 12. Uh, I don't think you got it yet. If we don't pull on the veil and rip the veil, we ain't got this thing where we think we got it. I dare somebody to shout, nothing but the blood. You can tell, t look at four or five people say, I can look at your posture and tell you got no victory. Look, go ahead, tell four or five people say, I can look at your face 
Tough off, I'll be saying, I can look at your face. I can look at your posture. I can monitor your mind, um, your, your countenance. And I can tell you right now, you carrying something that ain't Jesus. You carrying the world. You carrying a hurt. You carrying your job. You carrying a spouse, a betrayal. So, hey, I am not coping with you. I am conquering this thing. I'm going to laugh and be happy. I've been in ministry 40 years. I started in 1981. I preached my first sermon in 1981. If I let people be the barometer of who I was, I'd have quit a long time ago, April. Because the one thing I learned about Christian people is they're, they're, they're as loyal as their feelings. That's it. They will you when they're feeling good, and they gone from you when they ain't. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Hallelujah. Let's talk about Palm Sunday for a little bit. I, I want, uh, you know, it's Palm Sunday and we're not a typical church. We didn't pass out the little palm leaves and give them to you and all. And it's okay if they do. We just, you know, I try to stay on the same thing and move the same way. We should be the, we shouldn't have separate day, uh, uh, Sunday. We, it should be Christmas every day. It should be resurrection every Sunday. It, 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 right? It, it, you know. And, and, and if you really want to study the holidays, really and truly, I mean, and here it comes an offensive statement, but if you really want to study this holidays, Easter, Christmas, and all that, it was all set up so that the Christians and the pagans could get along. So you need to go back to Constantine and the creeds and the gathering and they had all of the religious leaders together and for the sake of everybody. Because if you go back and study history, Christianity is as bloody as every other religion. For the name of the Crusades in, the, in Jerusalem and taking it for 150 years and murdering the, and killing it. If you go back and see how many Jews the Christians killed back in the day with Pope and the cat, I mean, okay. So now you got Easter. You got a, as much as you got resurrection, you got Easter eggs. What's that got to do with the power of Jesus? What's a bunny got to do with Jesus? A bunny? The only thing, good thing about that is that chocolate bunny. I love them chocolate bunnies. I told Johnny, I said, I think a racist invented white chocolate. Can't even have chocolate. You want to make it white. I'd be racist. He started laughing. I mean, really and truly, if you think about it, Christmas Christmas trees. I mean, there's a sense of how to get along. And I'm not telling you go, you know, don't do Christmas trees and your kids hate Jesus because you, oh, we're going to make. None of that's going to invite demons in your house unless you worship those things. A demon's only attracted to what you worship, too. That's why the demons can't come when you worship Jesus. So let's talk about Palm Sunday, Matthew chapter 12. All four of the Gospels. All four of the Gospels. You're playing with me today. It's been a while since you've been there. I like it. You look good. Guess. I used to preach on guests. You know, I told you that, right? He's got guest shirt on. I said, you know, when I was going to high school and all, men didn't wear guests. And Calvin Klein, that was the girls. And I said, and I preached a whole message one time, and it's a youth pastor, Bobby. Girls had guests on their chest, Klein's on their behinds, and nothing on their minds. <laughs> Okay, it's a joke. It was in the 80s. I was 18. I was trying to get everybody in the altars. Okay, forgive me. Jesus, I already felt your judgment. Can't say nothing. Help me. All four of the Gospels bring up the story. It's interesting to me. They call it the triumphant entry. It's a triumphant entry, yet there's been no battle. And by the end of the week, there'll be a, a man beaten half to death and crucified. But it's called the triumphal entry of Jesus. Matthew chapter 12, if you'll turn there, verses 1 through, well, we'll read a little bit of the story. You got a, you got a few minutes or you need to go? You got some time? Okay, let, I, I know the band's got all day because they got to practice. So I'll hurry up and let y'all get, get in this thing. At the time Jesus went through the uh, grain fields <clears throat> and his disciples were hungry and they began to eat. We, we need to move past that. We ain't got time for all that. Let's see. Let's get, let's go a little bit further. 
Well, maybe it ain't in Matthew 12. Maybe I wrote the wrong. What is it? Well, hang on. We'll go. You know what? Let's just pick another synoptic. <laughs> there it is. See, 21, I think. Let me let, let me see. They're my dyslexic. I wrote down 12 when I meant 21. Y'all pray for me. You going to forgive me on that one? Thank you, April. I was looking like, that don't make no sense to me. None of that lines up to what I was reading. <laughs> so I, surely I wasn't that the, the tired. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, there you go. He came to Bethphage at the mountain of Mount, Mount Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you. And immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. Now he thought about it. He said, now, if anyone says anything to you, so you're already thinking about mm, people going to think you're stealing this donkey. <laughs> he said, anyone asked you why you untying these donkeys, you shall say to them, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. Think about that a moment now. If you get questioned, you t it's almost back in the book of Jude when the angel says to Satan, the Lord's in need of these. Isn't it something how people are going to release when God is doing it? And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughters of Zion, this is Zechariah 9, 9. We'll probably go there in a little bit. Tell the daughters of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you. Mm. Lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, total, a, fo a fowl or foal of a donkey. And so the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on the, and set him on them. Now, it's interesting. Some translators, some say that he sat on the, the mother donkey and had his legs over the younger donkey. And some say he just rode, okay, uh, but it's a donkey. Okay. They brought the donkey, and every and a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. They laid their garments on the ground. They did this because it was signifying royalty. And you got to go back in some of the other gospels or other parts of the Old Testament. You're going to see when the king was coming into the palace, they'd lay their clothes on the uh, garments on the steps and all, and it's signifying that this man walking is now above what we are. He is the, he is royalty. Is not of us. He's elevated. And so they, the great, great multitude, they spread out. And then they, they cut down branches from the trees. We get Palm Sunday. And they spread them on the road. And the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna of the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest. Now we sang this. This is Christmas, Right? And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And so the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. And then Jesus went into the... Now, Jesus' first act coming in is he goes to the temple. And he goes to the temple. And what happens? He's going to, he's going to clean out the temple. He's going to... Turn over the money tables. You're going to find out that this donkey and this story is not just a one-time event. And it's amazing to me when I study the Bible, it's amazing to me how much thought goes into writing scripture and how the mind of God is so in intentional how he could write stories through authors 
and write 40 authors through thousands of years, overlapping stories on stories and overlapping events on events, unlocking rhythms of the spiritual in a natural reading, putting code in it, Bible codes, seasonal codes, and it hiding within the natural writing of men revelation that comes straight from the throne of God. This amazes me that the Bible is so far more advanced than any book you've ever read. For it can move you emotionally, it can move you physically, but it can also go beyond the veil of your, of your consciousness and get into a subconscious level where it can go into a place in your generational bloodlines by the power of the Holy Ghost and it can eradicate things of iniquities that you didn't even know were hiding and attached in closets and places up in your psyche. Somebody shout, look at God. That he can go in and erase things of your past just by you understanding there's depth to this Bible. I want you to write down five points that I think Palm Sunday represents. Number one, the position of a king. The affirmation of a father. The loyalty of the lamb, the ministry of a man, and the manifestation of power. I'm going to go again. Chill. <laughs> Number one, Palm Sunday, what I think the entry represents. Number one, the position of a king. The posture of a king, the position of a king. The affirmation of the Father. What's going on in this entry is the love of God, the affirmation, God affirming. The loyalty, number three, of the Lamb. You got so much stuff going on. You got more than just a man on a donkey, a uh, from Nazareth, you got a whole spiritual thing moving, and nobody, and you got demons positioning for a battle. You got angels moving around. You, you, you got a whole scenario of events going on outside your physical view. You, you, you have no idea if God could have pulled back and show you the veil, it would be like a movie of what's taking place in the spiritual because angels and we are angels know demons know there is a battle coming and this battle has nothing to do with Rome but everything to do with freeing man from the bonds of evil and darkness and you got an event going on and you got the positioning of a king a king that never, listen to me, a king that never lost position. You have the affirmation of a father of the source of Yahweh. Because Yahweh set it up in Genesis. So you got the fulfillment of Yahweh's affirmation you have the loyalty of the lamb. You got a man who knows seven days from now, I, 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 this is starting, but man, not, this is going to turn, and it's going to turn pretty bad. And, and even the point of Jesus getting on this donkey is telling you deep down inside, he's got loyalty beyond love. And, and, and we, we love to say the love of Jesus, but, but I'm more affirmed to this. It's not the love of Jesus that you ought to be thankful for. It's the love of God for you. You really want to be thankful. You really want to be understanding. If God didn't have the love he had for you, he wouldn't have put himself through the pain of getting you back. You are so valued to God. Not because you could do anything to better who he is. 
your value to God because you he was what he designed and made and hell tries to use against him. But God didn't just leave you wasted. Hallelujah. Say, I, you go look at somebody and say, I act wasted, but I ain't. <laughs> the loyalty, number four, the ministry of a man. It's just going on. And all this is happening on this first day of the entry of Passover. The, in, the, the ministry of a man. I don't matter, no matter how you want to slice it or dice it, he's all man. You got a all God and all man moment. And you have to, and if you don't understand the, 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 the vision of what this is going on, that this man, Yahshua, is carrying everything a man would carry. And then he is carrying everything that the divine would carry. You got divine and you got human together. And you don't have a conflict like you have in natural man, yet you got a natural man and a spiritual man in unity. And I thought this the other day. Can you imagine what you could accomplish if you could get the natural man to submit to the spiritual man? Can you imagine what you would, what joy and happiness uh, you would live on the earth when you realize uh, that satisfying the flesh is not near as satisfying as satisfying the spirit? Oh, I, I don't know if I should preach this or go home and eat. Do you, if, you're, if you could ever convince your body that feeding the spirit man far will bring greater joy than you feeding the natural man. For those that are led by the spirit shall be called the sons of God. The earth says, how long before thou reveal your sons? No gender there. The earth says religious people ain't doing it for a religious people are very good at being religious. That's probably the biggest problem with Americans. You're so raised in church, you know how to be religious, but you don't know how to move in relationship with the king. Is this all right? Is this offending you? I forgive you. It's true. Let a bad, let a tragedy come in your life. Let something come in your life. Let a tragedy, let something come in. You will immediately be like, oh, I know it was God. Let, let, have a car wreck, a bad one. Let something happen to you that, that, that you, your natural body is like hurting over it. Your, your immediately your body will back up and say, man, we need that spirit guy in charge here for a while. And the spirit will wake up when there's a trauma to your natural body. And you'll be crying to God. You'll be, it's almost like I saw a movie one time. And the guy went, fell off a boat. And he's got to swim 20 miles to the, to the shore. And so he already knows that's a, that's a pretty long swim for me. So while he's out there, he said, God, if you, if you help me. Get to shore. And he started naming all this stuff he's going to do. I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this and this. I'm making all these vows. When he got halfway, he saw, oh, I'm halfway there. He said, God, if you help me, he cut the list in half. That's religion. Then he got, and the closer he got, the less his list got with God until the point when he felt the ground. He just said, Lord, thank you for letting me get here. And he canceled the whole list. That's how people are. That's what religious people do. I promise you. I promise you. I know it's God that spared my life. I know it's God that saved my life. I know that wreck should have killed me. It didn't kill me. I'm going to go to church and ain't going to miss no Sunday. I'm going to pay my tithes. I'm going to give my offerings. I'm going to do my seat. I'm going to praise. I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to go home and clean up my refrigerator. I'm clean up my house. And you do all that. Then all of a sudden your body starts healing. Things start happening. Guess what? You quit going to church. You quit Pain your ties. That's what religious people do. Religious people make decisions based immediately on the moment of a feeling. Guess what? Here's a man uh, who's got feelings just like you, but said, But I will not give in to these feelings. I, that is the ministry of a man who knows how to follow the divine. Is this okay? Is this all right? Is this good? Thumbs up, Bobby. Thank you. 
The rest of you are giving me that look like, I don't know yet. Religious people are just so good. And religious people are so good at trying to act so holy, they irritate everybody else. And you don't win people, you run them off. Hmm. The manifestation of power. So one more time, Melinda. The position of the king. The affirmation of a father. The loyalty of a lamb. The ministry of a man. For the manifestation of power. This whole Palm Sunday's got nothing to do with palm leaves, it, and then and then we have to talk. We have to. We, there's there's too many. There's too much in my notes. What is it? It's a story of a king who came as a lowly servant on a donkey, not prancing in a stallion or a steed, not in a royal robe, but on the clothes of poor and humble. This is Palm Sunday. And I thought to myself, he comes not to conquer by force as earthly kings would have. He has weapons that hell has no arsenal for. Hell had Rome waiting and all the arsenals of Rome. But when you see this king coming on a donkey and his weapons are immeasurably, they're weapons of mass destruction. Don't tell Bush. Here's the weapons. What's he coming to Jerusalem with, Helen? Love, grace, mercy. Think about it. I sat there in a minute and the Lord said, you know why he came on a donkey, right? He said, go back, you look at, look at antiquities. You call it a triumphal entry and no battle is being fought. You call it a triumphal entry and no enemy is there to oppose. And the people are crying Hosanna. And they're crying Hosanna, he said, but don't get fooled by the multitude. Because the multitude is not calling him Savior. They're calling him King. Their mind is not spiritual. Their mind is you're going to rise up and kick Rome out. They're not looking. They're not thinking of something in their spirit realm. They're looking for another Moses to get them out of Egypt. He said, and those multitude are so fickle, as soon as you get them out of Egypt, they got to spend 40 years in the wilderness getting Egypt out of them. That's the same people. Jesus knows it. He ain't doing it for them. So he comes in love. He comes in mercy. His message is of prosperity and peace. It's not about a temporal living. It's about a temple. It's not about a temple that's just a few yards from it. It's about the temple God's about to erect and according to Hebrews 8. It's about a church. It's setting up an empire hell has no weapons for. He rides in on a donkey. And then you go back. Let me, let me show you something in antiquities that I thought was interesting. Go to, look at Genesis 49. Start this. Let me just show you something. Let me just show you some. This about donkey. Genesis forty nine verse ten. Jacob divine blessing over his sons. Judah includes the reference to a donkey. And the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Now remember, Jacob's got his sons lined up, so he's, he's blessing them. He said, "The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes." And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Next verse. What well, he says. Binding his donkey to the vine and his donkey a colt to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, his clothes in blood of grapes. 
Jacob is talking to the bloodline of Jesus. And you got the first bloodline son standing there, and he's lining him up, and he's got, and he brings out Judah, and he said, and he blesses Judah, and then he brings up this word donkey. Interesting, isn't it? Look at, look at this. Look at God uses in in Numbers twenty two. The Lord opened the donkey's mouth. So if you went to Numbers twenty two, you're going to read a story about a prophet named. Balaam. Balaam has the seer's gift, but not the hearer's ear. He's not hearing from God. He sees things, but he is a hireling prophet. So he's not moving according to the prophetic. He's moving according to the prophet. And the king brings him to him. And he says, do you see this bloodline coming to my shores? Balaam says, I do. He says, here is X amount of dollars. Go and curse them. And obviously, he had enough divine power that had he was able to verbalize a curse, they would be cursed. So halfway there, God sent an angel with a sword. So you got to think about this. Go to heaven. Go to the council. God calls in one of the angels. He says, you go down to a certain, certain place at a crossroads and get behind the wall. Draw your fiery sword. When that prophet crosses your line, cut his head off. Why? Shut his mouth. And that prophet is, can see but don't know what God's doing. And halfway gets there. And all of a sudden, the donkey rebels against the instructions until the point where he's beating the donkey half to death. And finally, the, the Lord said, well, open the donkey's mouth. And the donkey delivered the man from being executed. God used the donkey for wisdom. And the donkey said, you don't see that angel standing there not to kill me but to kill you riding me? And so he fell down and he repents. And Balaam, you know the story. How many know the story of Balaam? Don't read it. He repents. And here's what. Here's what. He goes back to the king. And you know what he says? You got a problem. Them people that come to your shore just ain't normal people. Them people got Yahweh as their covering. I ain't talking about the gods of the gods. I'm not talking about the gods of the Philistines. The God, I ain't talking about all the fallen watchers. I'm talking about the one that made everything has become their God. And he sent a message back to you to tell me to tell you, you can't curse what that God has blessed. Somebody look at somebody and say, you can't touch me. Why? Because I got the blood all on. Nothing but the blood. You can't curse what God. You, yeah, that's why Paul said, greater is he that is in you uh, than he that tries to come against you. Why? If, this is what Paul said. If God be for me. Ain't nobody want to help me preach today. Ain't nobody want to preach today. Paul said, if God be for me. It don't matter who comes against me. You better be very careful who you open your mouth about. You better be very cautious what you sitting and saying at the coffee table, kitchen table about a man of God or a woman of God or a prophet of God. You better be very careful because if God has become for them, you will turn the very love of God against you. And he said, you touch them, God's going to come and touch you. Woo, look at that, don't touch me. That's the first MC hammer. The children of Israel are the first. Can't touch this. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you ought to have that kind of attitude. Unexpected comes. The unexpected happens. Things break down. Cars break down. Wives ain't always going to say what they need to say. Churches break down. Preachers ain't going to do what they need to do all the time. They're as human as you are, right? Life breaks down. Now, guess what? But you ain't going to break down with it. Why? Can't touch this. 
And you have to become so confident that just because it seems like there's a lot of chaos around me right now don't mean that God ain't working something out on my behalf. Oh, God, I'm trying to preach something. Maybe somebody in the back would like this message. I don't know. Maybe somebody back there shout a little bit. Because you could have you could have died in COVID. You could have died. Your kid could have died. The wreck could have killed you. But God said, <laughs> can't touch that one. Can't touch. We already know, according to Scripture, that Satan has a list of people that God has a list of. Uh, because they said in the book of Acts, uh, Paul I know and Jesus I know. Who are you? You ain't on the list. I can't touch this. I dare you around until four or five people say, can't touch this. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Do it, Michael. Can't touch this. Nah, 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 nah. Next time the devil coming after your money. Next time, it all in the physical because, see, you got to understand something. Just because it's happening in the natural world don't mean that God's in approval of it. It just means hell's trying to distract you or something. Why? Because I think that hell saw an angel carrying a big sack of blessing, and he had your address on the bag. Uh, it had 219 H Street. Put your address in there, the old Vashti Road or whatever your address is, and he saw the angel with that uh, guy, like a mailman coming from divine kingdom to your house, your address, your business, and and so he blows up things in your natural world, hoping that you get so beat up, so depressed, so mad, so offended, so bitter, so unforgiven that the blessing go right by your house. But the devil is alive because you can't touch this. That's why you got to learn how to praise when everything is in panic. You got to turn your panic into praise, your worry into work. You got to turn your complaint and your worry and your panic in the hallelujah. You got to just be crazy. You got to just go spiritual nuts. Your car's got to blow up. You got to pull it over the side of the road and you start dancing. And the people are like, what's wrong with you? I got a new car on the way. How you know? Because God wouldn't let this one break down if he didn't have somebody set up for me in my future. All I got to do right now is not get distracted. Because my flesh wants to cuss. I want to break my steering wheel. I want to kick my tire. I want to call you on the phone and cuss you out. Oh, yeah, I do. I'm so glad my walls don't have cameras. Don't act like you holy in every event. We just ask your children. But one for grace. Aren't you glad God don't talk about you like you talk about others? Can you imagine if God went and decided to go? Aren't you glad God don't have a Facebook page? Instagram. It says the real God, not a fake one. <laughs> and then he just, and then aren't you glad he don't post his feelings? Whew. Oh, today. Johnny Ingram. Uh, oh, I could see you. Because <laughs> I know you ain't going to get offended. I said somebody else had to go home. I bet you talk about me. I know you got this stuffed skin. I know that. But Daphne keep you in line. I just say, imagine Jesus be God like you. Oh, Johnny Ingram, he sure did praise me on Sunday. Boy, boy Monday. I ain't never in my life. I was so offended. He hurt me so bad. Y'all pray for Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus be so messed up, then he waiting for comments. And everybody's got a comment. You know that, right? You know, how, oh, well, why didn't Daphne like, but like, why didn't she like me? The, 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 the understanding of kingdom, that, that, that this, this, are you learning something? Yes, sir. 
Balaam, if it weren't for the donkey, Balaam's in trouble, y'all. Yeah. Uh, look at, look at, look, if you was in Judges 15, 15, look, in Judges 15, 15, there's this man who's Superman, okay? And, and, and this, and this Superman has a thousand warrior Philistines coming after him. And the Bible said he took a jawbone of a donkey. And he whooped a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. So you think, ah, oh, it's a donkey. I don't know. God's got a, he's got a, a sense of humor. If you, if you was in 1 Kings 13, God sent a lion to devour a false prophet. And while the false prophet is being devoured by lions, the donkey sat and watched. Luke, does that seem normal to you? That a lion prances out of the woods and the lion jumps on the prophet who is on the donkey. And the donkey don't run off thinking, I'm next. <laughs> you know why? The donkey knew the lion ain't here for me. <laughs> the lion, would, he's here for the prophet. He had a revelation that the Lord wasn't going to let the lion touch him. Man, if I could give me some donkeys up in this house right now. Don't even, you would have been running the minute the lion come, you gone. You'd have left me sitting there getting eat. And the donkey sat there and watched it. And the donkey just, and, and then the Bible said the donkey carried the slain prophet back home. <laughs> well, at least he's, he's an obedient. If he was in 2 Kings, look. King Jehu rode a donkey into Samaria, a kind of false Jerusalem, in order to destroy the temple of the false god Baal. And here's a donkey. He's gonna, here's a King Jehu. Here's Jehu. Now, Jehu's a bad mamma jamma because Jehu's the one that took care of Jezebel. So when, El when, when Elijah's anointing destiny, He's anointing a king named, he's anointing Jehu. Jehu's anointing is to go down and deal with this gospel of, 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 of appeasement. He said, you go down and deal with Jezebel. Here's this man riding a donkey, and he gets there so that, that because riding a donkey as a king meant I come in peace. But he doesn't come to fight. He comes to destroy the temple of Baal. Why? Because he serves Yahweh, the true God. Isn't it interesting that Christ is going to enter Jerusalem on a donkey? And his next act after the donkey is another Jehu. He's going straight to the temple and let everybody know my house shall be called the house of prayer. There's a new temple in town because there's a new sheriff on the throne. Is this a good word? Here's another thing you need to know. Let me give it to you again. Here's Palm Sunday. It's the positioning of a king. It is the affirmation of a father. It is the loyalty of a lamb. All this is taking place. Why? Because as soon as Jesus gets on that donkey, everything is set up. It has to. Now the clock starts. The fullness of time has come. That God sent his only son. Everything started right there. He don't get on that donkey, the clock don't start. He don't ride into Jerusalem and they don't cry Hosanna, the clock don't start. The lamb is getting prepared on the donkey. And, and the Lord said, and, and he's going to ride a donkey because a war horse, may I come to fight. And here's what the Lord said to me. If Jesus comes on a war horse, it will signify 
that hell controls the kingdoms. He said, and it would have, and if he comes to fight a physical battle, then it's proof that hell stole the earth from me. He said, Jesus doesn't come to fight a battle for the kingdom because the kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting. The kingdom has never ceased. There was no conquering kings because he is the king of kings. <laughs> There's no worrying about property. He's the Lord of lords. And he came in on a donkey because he's not trying to fight Rome because he told Caesar's man, if we wanted to do this tit for tat, I could call angels. Yeah, yeah. That's what he said. He said, where's your army, king? And the positioning king says, first of all, for me to bring my army gives you preeminence. And ruin my preeminence as king. But if I didn't lose it, I don't have to come and regain it. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, I didn't come to the earth to get back something. I didn't lose the kingdom. I lost man. I came to get man back. I didn't come to get territory back. Uh, if I want the land, the earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. I didn't come to claim territory. I came to get back what I formed. I came to get back what I made. I came to get back what I loved. I came to get back something that can walk and talk and breathe and was deceived in a garden by that man, Lucifer. I didn't come to fight no kingdom. I'm already the king of all kings. This Palm Sunday, baby. Can't touch this. And, 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 and Pontius says, you know I stand in proxy for Caesar. <laughs> She's like, yeah. And he said, you know I got authority. I say this and that and this and Jesus is listening. And it's interesting that when the religious people ask Jesus questions, he never answered them. Not one. Caiaphas tried to talk to Jesus. He wouldn't even respond to Caiaphas, and he's the high priest. Jesus is silent in every religious battle. Why? He said, I'm not here in religion. I'm not about a religion. I am the thing. I am it. I'm not a denomination. I'm a dominator. I come in. I'm already got dominion. If you and me argue, then we're fighting for dominance. When you stop arguing, you said, I don't have to argue with a fool. Only a fool argues with someone. The people come to me all the time. Bishop, God said, I'm done. I'm ready to go and leave. I'm not going to argue with you. Bye. See you. Love you. Pray for you. Never talk about you. Because I already know it's no sin. Most people leave seasons not because God led them, but because offenses overtook them. Because Jesus doesn't get offended. He doesn't get angry like that. He got angry in the temple, but not angry the way you think. Here comes this, this king, and Pilate says. Where's your army? So what he was saying is the proof of a king is, is, is you have the ability to fight the other kingdom. Are you a king? He says, yes. Watch what he says to him. But my kingdom is not of this world. You know what he said? I'm, I, the rhythm won't be broke by you. <laughs> you know Why? Y'all have come and gone, and I'm still on the same throne. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And he said, where's your army? That's, he's being sarcastic. You know what Jesus said? <laughs> I have 10,000 legions. Huh? Now he's speaking Rome 
numbers. They know what legions are all about. Listen, to be a legionnaire in the Roman Empire, you had to carry a 90-pound pack like 10 miles. You had to pay for your own weaponry, and you had to commit your life to the empire. If you survived, they'll give you a plot of land and a stipend for the rest of your life. 95% never survived. He's going to talk his terminology. I got 10,000 legions of angels. And I could call one of them. That's braggadocious. You know what he was trying to tell Pontius? When, when I want to deal with a city, I just send an angel. I don't send them all. <laughs> one whoop Sodom. One whoop Gomorrah. <laughs> One. One angel would whoop Rome. One anointed man whooped a thousand Philistines. That wasn't an angel. That was just a man anointed. So he looks at him and says, I'm not here to fight Rome. I'm here to die on a cross. So it's almost like Jesus is going to do this and I'm closing. Jesus is going to say this. Would you hurry up and crucify me? Would you get this thing over with? Why? Because I got a resurrection waiting on me. And you know what I think Jesus was saying? I'm tired of living in this body. (laughs) I'm tired 33 years of being a man. I'm ready to go back to being who I was. I'm ready. And I got the Holy Ghost. And I know when you get done beating me and you get done scourging me and you get done spitting on me and you get done pulling the hair out of my face and you get done doing everything in the natural, there is somebody going to pick me up like I did last. He said, look, he'll be better to me than I was to Lazarus. He ain't going to let me rot four days. I'm coming out in three. High five somebody right now. So I'm telling you, you can't touch this thing. You can't touch it. This thing is far bigger than going to church. This is the church. Palm Sunday is about to establish the rule of the church. It is position of the king. It is the affirmation of a father. It is the loyalty of the lamb. It is the ministry of the man. It is the manifestation of the power. It began on a donkey. (laughs) And my praise belongs to no one else but Jesus. My loyalty is to him. He is my king. Can you lift your hands and say, I want him to be my king too. Position of a king. The affirmation of a father. Oh, good God Almighty. Can you lift your hand and say, oh, the loyalty of a lamb. The ministry of a man. So I can move in the manifestation of power. Say this out loud. Say, Holy Ghost, fill me with this lamb right now. Let the word of God manifest in my heart. Let all forgiveness dwell in my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I receive Christ. If you don't know this lamb, this Christ, you might have been raised religious your whole life, but you want to know the lamb. You just say, Lamb, Jesus, my heart is for you. It beats for you. This is my story. This will be my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Michael, I feel that. Just so you know, all my points spelled out palm. P-A-L-M. Palm Sunday. (laughs) Stand to your feet. Can't wait for tomorrow night, 6.30. We'll be here. 
Carlos, you going to be with me tomorrow night? You going to be able to make prayer tomorrow night? It, we'll, we'll have some live worship if Carlos makes it, and then we'll pray. Tomorrow night, we're going to pray that prayer and help God deliver us from us. Tuesday night, children, I'll let you know about Wednesday night. Love you guys. I release and decree that every satanic agent that comes against your house shall be paralyzed in Jesus' name. That you will move in victory everywhere you go and you will, uh, you will have the love of God on your house and in your children and your children's children. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hug four or five people. Tell them I love you on this Palm Sunday. Go have a good day today. Enjoy the sun. I'll see you tomorrow night, 630. Can't wait for Easter. We're coming up, Resurrection Sunday. Love you guys. Hey, take us away, Carlos.